The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory be to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Be on your guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home, he puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the cock crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated and open your Bibles. It's the Sunday's reading of the first Sunday of Advent, Mark chapter 13, verses 33 to 37. I can see Pritam checking on Wilson to see whether he's doing a good job with the camera. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, it's very hard when you have to preach uh, two homilies on the same day with the same gospel. Yeah? Today being the first Sunday of Advent, uh, we have to stick to the liturgy of the church. Uh, and that's the beautiful thing. Sometimes we think, oh, we have to have wedding readings. Um, I myself at the start of this, uh, preparing this homily, I was wondering, what am I going to say with words like, be aware, keep alert, you do not know. I mean, these are not the best words you want to hear on your wedding day. Yeah? Be, a, be aware, keep alert, stay awake. Yet, here we are on the first Sunday of Advent at the wedding of Pritam and Bonita. And the text of our Sunday readings seem to be filled with these very alarming, or what appears to be very alarming words. Perhaps uh, many of you listening to these words, those who are watching uh, live this Eucharistic celebration, would have wished for words that would have sounded more lovey-dovey, <laughs> more loving, more compassionate, more kind, and more comforting on a wedding day rather than as alarming as be alert, stay awake, keep watching. I think that is perhaps the first lesson we can learn from life. Um, you see, life does not dish out what we want. Life dishes out what we need, not what we want. Maybe I wanted other readings today, but for some reason, life gives us these readings because this is the reading that perhaps you need more than what you would like and want. For example, most people enter the season of Advent with a certain expectation. Yeah, we have certain expectations. Um, we wait for the baby to be born on Christmas Day in swaddling clothes. That's our expectation. Uh, we would perhaps be anticipating a manger crowded with shepherds and Mary and Joseph and even the kings. We look perhaps forward to Christmas, to the cakes and the tinsel and the sorpatel and the shiny reflective red, green, silver gift wrappings. And uh, this is our expectation. And yet the, at the start of the season of Advent, we don't seem to be getting what we want we get what we need. And what we hear are the words, stay awake, be aware. In fact, at first glance, these prophetic words uh, taken from the gospel and even from the first reading seem to be so very dim. Now, marriage, if not the whole of reality, really uh, reflects in a way these readings. On a wedding day, the bride and the groom begin a new journey. And they begin, as all couples do, a journey 
with many expectations. Uh, there are dreams, there are wishes. Perhaps the two of you had imagined this day to be quite different. You had planned this wedding, I think, well before the pandemic. And then we had a pandemic. You had planned Pritam just before the pandemic began. You had a ticket in your hand to go on a cruise line, to go start working there, and then look at our expectations. Then we planned this wedding for a particular day in November. And Bonita and Lutz got COVID and the whole thing had to be delayed. We may have wanted many things. Our expectations have been great and different. And yet God, in His own time, in His own time, makes everything so very beautiful. And this is what we need to learn, that we have expectations yet God works quite differently. So you will have many more expectations in the days to come. The expectation of how are you going to decorate your home? It's an expectation that you have. I can see you are both smiling. The notion of what a honeymoon should be. What is a perfect holiday? These are expectations we have. Yet as life has come to teach us, as I said, God has his plans, and the more we submit to God's plans, the happier we shall be. Now, does this mean that therefore we should not have any dreams? Therefore, should we just submit to everything? No, we should have dreams. We dream dreams, but we, more than anything else, we give our dreams to God. They, say, they once said, a foolish person tells God his plans. Yeah? A foolish person tells God his plans. A wise person tells God what he really needs. And God listens. He knows what exactly is required in our lives. Ironically, even though at first glance, as I said, we may not think, there is so much of love in the words, beware and be alert. It doesn't sound like words of love, but there is so much of love in those words, beware and be alert. These are words that always will come from the mouth of someone who loves you, who cares for you. Only someone who truly loves you will say, be aware, be alert, be careful, stay awake. Let me give you a few examples. See, a mother will always tell her child, be aware of strangers. Why does a mother do that? Because a mother loves, a mother cares. Let me give you an, another example. While crossing the road and you are with a loved one, have you realized that you instinctively look for the other person? And you ask them, be careful, huh? look left, look right. You alert them because you love them, not because you hate them. If you hated them, you'd have waited for a car to come and then said, go walk. Yeah? But because you love someone, you say, be careful, be aware, be alert. Let me give you another example. At the time of examinations, parents will stay awake. They will stay awake. They will ask you to stay awake. They will ask you to be careful. They will say, have you started studying? They anticipate the fact that perhaps you have not and they will encourage you to be aware. Each day, in these days, when our loved ones leave home, we are aware of the pandemic. And so what do we say to one another when we leave home to go to work? Be careful. Be awake. Do not make a mistake. Sanitize your hands. You see the words, be aware, keep alert are not negative words, they are positive words. They are words of tremendous love, care and concern. Be aware and be alert is God's message to both of you today. I said readings, God gives us the words that we need. And today, Pritam and Bonita, he says to you, be aware, be alert. Why? Because we know that marriages are fraught with challenges and difficulties. There is no marriage 
that is easy. Anybody who tells you that their life, their marriage has been roses and peaches is either a little out of their head or they are very good liars. There is no marriage, not a single one, that has been without tremendous difficulties and struggles. And God knows that. And that is why he says, be alert, be aware. Also, remember that there was even a serpent in the Garden of Eden. Even in paradise, in the most perfect place, there was a serpent. That serpent can take many forms, enticing us away from the bonds of marriage, which is centered around three persons, the two of you and God. Remember what Satan did in the Garden of Eden. Remember, Satan is the prince of liars. He is a deceiver. What did he do? He sowed doubt. I don't know how many marriages today have gone through difficulty because we have submitted to doubt and not faith in one another. You begin to doubt your relationship. Do you love me as much as you should? Have you done this? Have you done that? Are you devoted to me? Where does all this doubt come from? It comes from the evil one. And it began in paradise with Satan. He sowed doubt. Remember that Adam and Eve were made in God's image and likeness. And yet, what does Satan say to them? Satan says, if you eat of this fruit, you will be like God. You will be like God. But hello, they were already made in the image and likeness of God. You know, many people think that the first sin of Adam and Eve was the sin of disobedience. No, it wasn't the sin of disobedience. It was the second sin. The first one was that they lost faith in the words of God because God had made them in His image and likeness. And this prince of darkness, the master deceiver, Satan, the prince of liars, wants to distract you and perhaps many marriages from the purpose of God. And so he sows doubt. God wants you to acknowledge that he is the center of your marriage. That is why he was in the Garden of Eden. It was he who gave away the bride. The first one, Bonita, even though your father is in heaven and he may have not given you away, he was never meant to give you away because it was God's job. When God made Eve God brought Eve to the man. God was the first father of the bride and God is always the father of the bride. He brings you. You were not alone because God himself brought you to Pritam and gave you away. So beware of the double standards that Satan will keep trying to spread in your life. Beware and be alert. Words I'm going to use again and again in this homily. These are God's words of love to you. Because he loves you, he shares these words of love. But very often, waiting and watching are just two of the words that God, God gives to all of us at the start of the season. There is one more word which I want to share with you besides waiting and watching, and that is working working. If you paid attention to the gospel, you will remember that the master in the parable set out on a long journey. He gave the slaves in his home certain tasks. He assigned certain tasks to the watchman of the house because he knew he was going to go away but come again and therefore he asked them to be watchful. The servants and the watchmen are expected to work to make sure that everything runs smoothly. At Advent, God is also reminding us that He expects us also to be at work, work with our souls, to be diligent in the task that He has given us. I know both of you have been so involved in the church. 
Bonita for years in the choir, as a lector with children, even now at the start of the pandemic, online children's choir. I'm sure many of them are watching their teacher Bonita. Pritam has been so involved in these last nine months and even before that. You have been at work, but you can't rest because God has given us a task and left and he wants the two of you to continue his work. Work is hard, especially when it comes to devoting time to the church. You have to, there's so much less for you, your time. You have to sacrifice so much in order that you give God his due. But he left you with a task. He asked you. He asked you to take care of his church. He, the third person in your marriage. So you can't sit, none of us can sit on our laurels and say, well, I have done for Jesus, when I was young, now it's time for me to retire. We can never retire. Many years ago, I, uh, I'm sorry, I'm embarrassing Brother Paolo, but many years, some years ago, I once, uh, I said to Brother Paolo, I was on a holiday and we couldn't go for Mass. And Paolo said to me, but God never takes a holiday from us. God never takes a holiday from us. He expects us to be at work, constantly serving Him, as he's asking you to serve. Working for Jesus is therefore an everyday duty. Similarly, every marriage requires a lot of hard work. Yeah? Marriage is a lot of hard work. You don't just have perfect marriages. You have imperfect people who work every day at their marriage. And that's what makes marriages work. Not the fact that you sip champagne and you sit down by a lovely pool or you watch the sunset. I mean, you can watch as many sunsets as you want. You'll still be fighting. But the fact that you make your marriage work, you work hard at it, that is what God really wants. And perhaps the best advice I can give the two of you today is this. Wake up each day and as you lift your eyes to God, also renew your marriage vows because your marriage vows speak of the two of you as having to work in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love and honor you for the rest of my life. Finally, as with the season of Advent, we may not know, my dear brothers and sisters, when the Lord will appear or where the Lord will appear. But one thing we are certain, we know who will appear to us. We know that finally, Jesus will come. And that is what we look for. My dear Pritam and Bonita, you may not know what to expect in the days to come. You most certainly. You may not know the challenges that you are going to face in your married life. But today you have gathered here before His altar and no other altar. You have gathered here before in His presence and no other presence. To love Him and to love each other. I pray that Jesus may guide, guard and bless you always. And now, Having done with my prepared text, I want to say a few words to the two of you. I always say to Pritam, I may have not been responsible for your birth, but in so many ways, you and many of the boys in this parish have been sons to me. I have seen you all all grow. We were 15 and 17 when I first met you. We were little children. <laughs> young people and now in 10 years God has blessed me with the privilege of guiding of guarding of helping nurturing and seeing you all to this day my job is over from now on you take care of each other you love each other I know that both of you have beautiful hearts so beautiful that um even though we are 25 people in church and 25 people for this reception, you carry in your hearts, both of you, the love of all your friends, many who are watching. I know you would have liked them to be there. But I want to share one thing that really touched me today. Um, beautiful day as it has been. When I saw your bouquet, that for me, if ever I remember this wedding, it will be your bouquet. There were two things to that bouquet. One I knew and one I did not know. 
What I knew is that Pritam decided to make it for you. And knowing how clumsy his fingers are, that is quite an achievement. <laughs> yeah? As delicate as those flowers are, the most delicate in the market, it was his way of pushing himself, perhaps, in an area of life that he is not comfortable with, flower decorations. But as I said, that's the power of love. But I think what moved me more is the second thing, which I did not know when on the terrace I saw your bouquet. Can I have it, please? <laughs> what a strange request. <laughs> Can I have the bouquet? I don't know whether you can see it, everybody, and those in the camera. Uh, there is a parishioner who is a very close family friend who recently passed away last month, who was one of our oldest parishioners. There's Pritam's dad. And look at this resemblance. It's wonderful. Pritam's dad, who is up with Jesus. Your dad, Santiago. Your uncle. Your grandfather. Your uncle who passed away in Goa. And your aunt. And this is... Ah, this is Terry auntie. Terry. You carried the ones you loved who are not here with you. What does that say about a person? It's the most amazing thing anybody can do. To say that I will never forget. That is what love does. Love remembers. God bless you both. And I'm keeping this for myself. <laughs> Here, you can have it back. Let us spend a few moments in prayer for this couple. <laughs> 